In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship. Wherever we are, in the sanctuary, in your own home, or wherever that might be, we are in the house of God, and it is good to take this opportunity to give thanks to the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. I love the Lord because God has heard my voice and my supplications. Because, because God, God inclined his ear to, to me, therefore I will call on the Lord as, as long as I live. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will, I will pay, pay my vows to the Lord in the, the presence of all his people. Now let's join in our hymn, Blessed Assurance.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. no. In, In all things we are more than conquerors through the through one who loved us. For we are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, interrupted, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he broke bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This week for Children's Time, we'll hear a poem read by Eli Griffin and Safina Ernst. Walking the Road to Emmaus by Royston Allen. Their eyes were downcast and the pace was slow. Why these things had happened, they did not know. On their shoulders they bore grief, heavy load, as they walked that long Emmaus road. A stranger joined them as they walked that way, slowed his pace to hear what they had to say. Step by step, he walked along with them there, and from their scriptures he began to share. Grief-stricken and saddened, they did not know who it was that joined them walking so slow. In fellowship sweet, he expounded God's word, and their hearts glowed at everything they heard. 
From Moses through the prophets, he made known of an open tomb and a heavenly throne. Listen carefully while this man talked, as together the Emmaus road they walked. Did not the Christ have to suffer, he said, and after to be raised up from the dead? As they approached the place they were staying, he acted as though he would not go in. The day is far spent. Stay with us, they said, and he entered their house and broke some bread. At once their eyes were opened and they knew it was Jesus, but he vanished from their view. Did not our heart burn within us, they said, and up they got and off to Jerusalem's bed. Founded the disciples and said, it is true, the Lord has ra risen and we've seen him too. And now our prayer hymn, Kumbaya. time of prayer. Let's remember all of those who are helping us through this time, keeping our lives as normal as possible. Let's remember those who are delivering our mail, manning our stores, who are helping us in every way of life, and especially let's remember those doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals as they strive to save lives, make this a better place. Also thinking about those things that we hold on our hearts, Let's go to God for a moment of silent prayer. How thankful we are, O oh God, for those who assist us in our living, for those who help us when we are sick, help us to stay well, safeguard us in all things. Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. Keep them safe as they strive to serve us in so many ways. And help us in all times of life as we read your scripture, as we open our hearts to your divine guidance, help us to be your people, that we might be a light in the world of darkness, that we might help others along the way, and that we might live our faith as we show you to others in all that we do. For this we pray in the name of Jesus, Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. This morning I'd like to introduce a short video. Uh, it's introducing Financial Peace University. Uh, that's of a radio talk show fame that God has graciously bought, brought to our church. The classes will be taught by our CUMC brother, Daniel Evans. The course is nine weeks long and will be, will be held on Thursday nights from 7 to 8.30 p.m. starting May 14th at the CUMC Ministries Building Gym. Or, if you would rather attend from home via the internet, you can use Zoom conferencing software that is free to download. This requires a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer with sound and preferably with a camera. You will be mailed a, a textbook upon registration and you are encouraged to attend as a couple. The uh, cost is $99 per individual or couple. It is discounted from the normal $129 and includes textbooks that will be mailed. Keep an eye out on the, for an all church bulletin containing contacts and registration information. If you are unable to attend this series, don't despair because Daniel plans to present other courses in the community in the future. For further information, you can, con can visit uh, DaveRamsey.com uh, and uh, this is a great opportunity for bringing stability, wisdom, and Christ's guidance to your family's financial life. God bless you and yours. For close to 20 years, families have been changing their futures through Financial Peace University. I started it with a bad suit and an overhead projector. I set the room for 135 people, four people came. And now today we've had over one and a half million families go through this course. That's over two million people across this nation. You may be wondering, what is it? What Financial Peace University is about is a return to God's ways of handling money, but in a very practical, step-by-step -step game plan showing you exactly how to do it. FPU is about learning how to control your money. When you make these dollars behave, you're going to get this sense of power over your money that you've never, ever had. Don't move into a home with 62 debts or six debts or, or two debts and no money. You move into a home broke with a bunch of debt around your neck, Murphy will move in your spare bedroom, bring his three cousins broke, desperate, and stupid. Marriages are being made stronger. Couples are learning how to talk to each other about money and getting on the same page. The closest statistical correlation to success going through this program are those that actively engage in this budgeting process and for those that are married they're doing it together. You change your life when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you get disgusted and you have that moment where you say, I've had it! I am not going to live like this anymore! We're done! We're changing this thing! Talk about the why. Talk about your dreams. Ask your spouse. What would we do? Where would we travel to? What would we buy? What would be changed if we became something as a couple where we were working together on that? Now, man, I'm sure you know this, and we've been talking about it for the last few minutes, but it's very true. Women are different, aren't they? Say yes. yes. One of the things you may or may not know is they have a gland right in here that you don't have. It's called the security gland. And when she is feeling insecure due to money issues, that gland spasms and it is attached to her face. This nine lesson, 90 minute class will challenge you. Now this is a boot camp. I'm your coach. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you uncomfortable sometimes. You're going to go home and go, I don't really like him tonight. Now if I agree with that, which would make you wrong. <laughs> That's what happens when the coach coaches you, doesn't it? He kind of rubs you the wrong way. There's a little friction on there, right? I've had some good coaches and they lit me up a time or two, but it caused me to go places I couldn't go otherwise. Life change is never easy, but you won't be alone. You'll watch a DVD each week and discuss it with your small group. Your classmates will encourage you and help you take those first steps. You'll walk away from FPU knowing how to relate with money. You'll learn how to pay off debt and save for the future. And you'll learn how to protect your plan. We aren't born knowing everything we need to about money. We learn, and there's no better place to learn than the Word. 
The Bible offers more than 800 scriptures on money, and Financial Peace University is based on that solid foundation. You are literally going to be doing things every week differently than you ever have based on biblical principles. Uh, things like doing a budget, things like working with your spouse, things like singles having an accountability partner, things like teaching your kids so that a godly man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. It's not theory. This is actual application on everything. What would happen if the people of God started handling money God's ways? What would happen? If the, what would happen to the kingdom of God if the people of God were out of debt? All you need is a plan. Financial Peace University is that plan. we thank you for your word that comes to us in scripture and for your help that we might hear it understand it and put it to work in life so I pray that in the next few moments the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight O Lord our rock and our Redeemer amen in the next few Sundays during this season of Easter we're going to be looking at steps to discipleship. Disciple is someone who 
hears the word of their teacher, who believes it, and then who spreads that to other folks as well. As disciples of Jesus, we believe what he said. We believe in Jesus. And so we want to share the message of Christ in all of our lives with all that we meet. We are thinking about some of those steps that lead us to Christ. Last week, we talked about doubt and how that sometimes can inform and strengthen our faith. And in the weeks to come, we are going to study together listening to Jesus, believing in Jesus, and living the life of faith. And now this morning, we look at a very important step in that life of faith, and that is seeing Jesus. And to do that, we take the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. As Colleen read that story to us from the scripture a few moments ago, two disciples following the crucifixion of Jesus were walking to a close by town, Emmaus. As they walked along, they talked about all that had happened in the past few days, how Jesus had ridden into town in triumph. The people had turned against him. He was mocked and he was tried and he was crucified. And then some say he had been raised from the dead. Along that walk to Emmaus, they were met by a stranger. And they didn't recognize who it was. They didn't recognize that it was Jesus. But that's a common thing with Jesus. For people were always seeing him in different ways. If you remember the story of how Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000 in the wilderness, you probably read those script verses that came after it that said people came to him because of the food that was available. He healed the sick, and so people brought him their sick. He taught about the love of God, and people hailed him as a great teacher, except for the scribes and the Pharisees, for they began to call him evil. But you would have thought that of all of the people, these two disciples, ones that had been closest to him, ones who had heard for themselves his words of life, that they would have recognized him. Now, I don't think it was because they didn't want to believe. For as well as any of the other disciples, they wanted to believe in the scripture that Jesus would be raised from the dead. They wanted to believe that their hopes were not buried away in some tomb. And yet, as they walked along, they just couldn't see Jesus. And it wasn't because they had faith. For the disciples were those who had left their homes, their livelihoods, their families in order to follow this man from Nazareth. No, I think it was something that was far different. Something that is common to a lot of people. It reminds me of the story that I heard one time about a lone ranger in Tonto as they were riding across the prairie. One night, they woke up in the middle of the night on the prairie. The Lone Ranger looked up and he saw a blanket of beautiful stars overhead. He said to Tonto, what do you see? And Tonto said, millions of stars. And Tonto also said to him, what does that tell you? The Lone Ranger said, well, Tonto, astronomically, it tells me that we live on a small planet in a vast universe that is populated by all kinds of wonders and starry images. Geographically, it tells me that we are in the western part of the northern hemisphere. Meteoro meteorologically, it tells me that we are presently in a high pressure area because the sky is so clear and there is not a hint of a cloud or rain. And theologically, why it tells me that we are in the midst of a vast creation made by a loving God and we are a part of God's family. The Lone Ranger then turned to Tonto and said, Tonto, what does this vast starscape tell you? Tonto said, Kimosabi, it tells me someone stole our tent. 
Now, there are a lot of complex situations in life. We are in the midst of an awful pandemic that scientists and medical experts are doing their best to figure out. We face complex problems and situations in so many areas that we always, I think, look for those answers that are complicated, that require much insight and, and much delving into that problem or that situation. But then there are a lot of things that come along in life that are very simple, that are so simple and yet we try to make them difficult because everything in life must be that way, isn't it? Faith is one of those things. Faith is so very simple. It's like Paul said in his letter to the Romans in chapter 10, verse 9. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And so to see Jesus, we just have to be looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus, that means having our eyes open to the goodness of God that is all around us. Seeing from the infinite to the infinitesimal, all of those ways in which God has shown the splendor of his majesty through his creation. It means having our minds open and ready, using the intelligence that God gave to us in looking at the creation around us and understanding the scriptures that are spoken to our hearts. And it means also having our hearts ready to acknowledge the presence of God. Listening to those feelings, those heart sounds that come and well up within us, that tell us that we are being nudged by the Holy Spirit into seeing God in all of life. See Christ where he is. See Christ in the wonders of creation, in the starry night sky, in the depths of the ocean, in the faces of people all around you. You know, a lot of times people will say that science and theology oppose one another and cancel each other out. I don't think so at all. I think that science and theology are complementary to each other. Theology tells us about a great God who made everything that is and who loves us. And science explains how God did that. How God put together all of those particles and all of the laws of nature and how God makes that to run in perfect order. We can see God also in the beauty of compassion. Think of the last time someone did you a favor or a random act of kindness, or someone helped you along life's way. Think of the last time you were able to do that for another person. Sometimes we observe. Sometimes we participate. But in all of life, those acts of kindness help us to know that God lives within us. God is shown in the tenderness of love as we reach out and help and hope to all those around. And God is also seen mightily in the gracious acts that demonstrate faith. All of us know people who live their faith, don't just talk about it, but actually live it and show Christ in the way that they act, in how they speak and the way that they treat other people. We can be one of those people and we can show Jesus to others by the way that we are and how we live our lives. A kindergarten class was drawing pictures. And as they were busy at work, the teacher went from desk to desk saying to each of the students, what is that? What are you drawing? Well, when she came to little Susie, she was busily working away. The teacher said, Susie, what are you drawing? Susie responded, I'm drawing a picture of God. But Susie, the teacher said, no one knows what God looks like. 
To which Susie answered, they will when I get done with this picture. God is portrayed in the lives of God's faithful people. You can show God to someone this day by the way that you live, by how you act, and how you reveal the Spirit in the midst of your living. So go out and show the wonder, the glory, the compassion, the strength, and the majesty of God in your life. Show them the picture of God that is within you. Amen. And now let's join in our final hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Now thank you to all of those who made this service possible today. For you who participated in your homes or wherever you are. And above all, thanks be to God who helps us to see Christ in the world around us and in the compassion of others. Let's remember that. Let's do that as we go out this week to be the people of God. Mm -hmm.